everybody, welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Today we are going to do multicolored heat transfer vinyl, HTV or iron on. Depending on what brand you look at is going to depend on what it is called. I'm actually going to use two different brands today. Um, we're going to use a foily shiny kind and a glitter. So I have this SVG, which you can purchase in my Etsy store below. Um, and we're going to make this on a gray t-shirt today. So it's obviously inspired by one of my favorite movies, Beauty and the Beast from Disney. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to click make it. And I'm going to show you what you have to do. If you are making anything with heat transfer or iron on vinyl, you have to use the mirror. Mirror is over here on your left hand side. And you're just going to turn mirror on. And what that's going to do is it's going to flip your writing. You're going to need to do that for both mats since we're using more than one color. So make sure that you select mirror on both mats. And also make sure that you are noting which mat comes first. Now that we are ready to make it, we are going to go over to our mats. I'll show you how to put your iron-on vinyl on your mat and then we can get started. We are going to go ahead and put our iron on on our mat. I'm going to use a green mat. This one isn't super sticky, but I cut my iron on in the size I need, which was a little bit over six inches, and then I just kept the width the same. With iron on, you want to make sure you put your shiny side down. This is a Sisser brand Easy Weed iron on in a red foil color. So the back of this one is going to be white. So you want to make sure that the back side, so the white side, is up and I'm gonna put it on my mat. I just used a um, guillotine type paper cutter to cut this so that it would have a, a nice straight line when I did it. And I'm just gonna apply that right to my mat. And like I said, I knew what size I needed because I already measured and I also looked at the grids. I'm gonna always double check just to make sure that Everything looks like it will fit just fine. We should be good. So what we're going to do is now that we have pressed our iron-on vinyl down, is we're going to go ahead and hit continue on our screen. And it's going to be ready to cut. But the one thing I want to note is make sure on your that your dial is set correctly. So for mine, because this is like a foily vinyl, I'm going to go ahead and put mine on custom. And I'm going to go over to my screen and I'll take you guys over to the screen so that you guys can see what's going on over here. Let me unplug you. I got you guys plugged in. Getting a little extra juice here. So here's our screen. Hopefully it will focus for you. And it gives us a bunch of options already pulled up. I don't see the option that I want, so I'm going to browse all materials. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to scroll down till I find iron on. Oh my god. The dog is going to be the death of me. Um, so it gives you a bunch of different options. We have a foil iron-on, glitter iron-on, iron-on holographic sparkle, neon. So there's a bunch of different kinds. This is considered a foil iron-on. So we're going to go ahead and select that and hit done. And now we can load our machine. So I'll take you back over to the machine. We load our machine now. So we're going to hit the load button. I'm telling you. I need to get a new mat. <laughs> and we're going to hit Cricut, the little Cricut Go button. And it's going to go ahead and cut out our design. So I'm going to let it cut out for you guys. Um, and then I'll show you the gold because we have to load the gold differently as well. And we'll have to do another custom setting on gold. When we come back, it will be done cutting on the red and we'll be able to move on. All right, we are ready to do our glitter vinyl now. So this is your glitter heat transfer vinyl and you can see one side is dull and the other is super sparkly so you want to make sure that you put the dull side up so the sparkly side will touch the mat I'm using a scrap piece I know that my piece that I'm doing is going to be a little over four inches wide so I know that I have to put my vinyl so that the wide side is the long way I'm going to use a newer mat for this because my um, HTV is so curly from being just like a scrap piece that I used. So I just want to double check my measuring. 
I want to make sure that I'll have enough space, which I do, because if I put it this way, you can see I won't even come close. So I need to make sure that it goes this direction, and I need to make sure that it's up in this upper corner. So we're going to just line it up, and we're going to press it down. Like I said, I'm using a newer mat on this because this one was super, like, curled. So in order to make sure that it's going to hold, I wanted to use the super sticky mat. Um, oops. Something's got stuck to my cricket at some point. Um, all right, so we are going to just load our mat. Again, always make sure it's under the tabbies. Hit the load button. Make sure shiny side is down. And we still have it set on custom. So what we need to do, we're going to come back over to our machine and, or to our computer, and I'll show you with the custom settings because you see how it says uh, make sure mirror is turned on. In order to let it make let me change my custom, I have to actually spin the dial and then put it back on custom. And what that's going to do is it'll bring this back up. Make sure that if you're using two different kinds of iron on, which we are for this project, that you do change your custom setting or it's not going to cut, especially on the glitter. So we know that it's glitter iron on. We're just going to select that right from that default menu. And we're going to hit the go button and it's going to cut our glitter, and that's just going to be the word bell. And we're going to let that cut. When we come back, I'll show you guys how to weed, and then we can apply our project. Okay, we are ready to weed. So I will tell you, weeding glitter HTV, oh boy. It is hard because you can't see where your letters are cut, like, at all. Even on the back, it is incredibly hard to see. So what I try to do is start in a corner and I just take my Cricut hook tool and what I do is I just stab a corner. <laughs> That's the only way I figured out how to get it off really easily is I stab a hole in a corner and I lift. And what that does is it's gonna start this corner for weeding. And then I just gently peel back as I go, kind of watching to make sure that all the parts of my letters stay. And once you've started it, you'll see kind of where you're at and you'll know what your letter should look like when you get to it to make sure that it's not peeling up any of your letters or your parts of your picture, whatever you may have put on your item. So we're going to go ahead and peel this. Now again, remember, it's going to be backwards this way because we need it to look right this direction. Um, I need to peel the middles out of the B. Um, again, same thing. I usually just stab it. <laughs> I don't know a better way to do it. I have yet to find one because this glitter is terrible. It's beautiful on, but oh my goodness, to get it off, what a pain it is. But it looks really pretty when you're done, so I think it's totally worth the work. Okay, so that one wasn't so bad because it was small. Um, it's going to look really pretty, but I want to point out, and a lot of people question why there's so much glitter, and I don't know how well you can see it. Maybe if I put it against the red. Um, there's a lot of extra glitter that gets stuck to the sticky. That's okay because it won't stick to your project um, because it doesn't have the glue that the letters have. So we'll move on. We're going to do the red, which is all sorts of curled up because I just used a brand new roll. Um, this one, I don't know how well you guys can see it, but you can sort of see where the letters are cut. When you flip it over, you can still see where the letters are cut to a point. So I do the same thing with this one. I usually will just stab it. I'm going to actually trim off the edge because there's a pretty decent sized edge to this one that I can save to use for something little um, later on. So I'm going to trim the edge off and put that into my scrap HTV stuff. And I might actually do that with this piece too because there's a pretty significant size right here. And a lot of times with these, I will try to trim my project really close to the letters or whatever I'm doing because it kind of reduces some of that extra glue that can possibly get stuck to your shirt or your bag or whatever you are using your heat transfer on. Just make sure to watch because you need to know where your letters are. So we've got that all peeled off. So the next thing we're going to do is flip it back over to the white side. And I'm going to find a corner and I'm going to hopefully just be able to stab it and pull it up. The foil's a little bit different. You usually can't stab it quite as easily. 
as the glitter, the glitter's much, much thicker, um, but I did get a corner up. So all I'm going to do is just really slowly, again, with heat transfer, you do want to go slow, um, and just slowly peel at all of my letters here. Um, I won't make you guys watch this whole thing because these do take a little while to do. I just want to show you once I get it off the one set of letters here. Um, I do tend to use my weeding tool sometimes, like I'll come up here and start getting it pulled away from the letter so that when I pull down, it comes off. Um, or sometimes I just get annoyed and I end up ripping it and coming back later to pull it away from the letter. Like the A, the W, things like that. Anything that kind of goes in an opposite direction of what you're pulling is going to probably not come off. Super easy, but there's the one set of words. So I just wanted to get that started and show you guys. And I don't know, I might have to put it against something. There we go, how well you can see. But there are our letters started. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish weeding this ginormous piece. When we come back, I will show you how to prepare your shirt. All right, we are ready to start getting our shirt ready. So while well, all I did is I bought a um, Gildan brand shirt from Michaels. They were on sale this week. Um, I also get them from Amazon or JiffyShirts.com. And I use an old cookie sheet. So this is just a brand, it's, it's technically never used, but I don't use it in the kitchen, so I call it an old cookie sheet. But try to use one that is not dirty because it can get on your shirt. And what I do before I do anything else is I put my cookie sheet <laughs> inside my shirt. Number one, what it does is it gives me a hard surface to work on. But what it also does is it conducts the heat from the back of the shirt as well. So, and it also keeps anything from going and burning through the shirt or, you know, any of that glue sticking to the other side of the shirt. So what I do, I always just kind of use my tag as my center line. So you can see the tag here. Um, I'm gonna scoot you guys over just a little because my sleeve is in the way. I might put you just on the sleeve at this point. Um, and then I just sort of unfold my sleeves so they're not under, and I make sure that the underside of my shirt is smooth so that when I'm going to press, it's not pressing at any kind of a weird angle. Um, I have to wait for my uh, iron to heat up, but while we're doing that, I'll show you my iron in case you haven't seen my other HTV videos. It's just a Black & Decker. I think it was like 30 bucks. Super cheap iron, nothing fancy. has all its settings down here. Uh, this is a 100% cotton shirt, so we will use the cotton setting, um, which all my settings are in this one. They're kind of behind the uh, handle. So what we'll do, we'll wait for this to heat up. One thing I want to make sure that you guys know is that you do not ever use steam using an HTV because if you use steam, it will ruin your heat transfer vinyl and your stuff will not stick. So when we come back, the iron will be heated up and we'll be ready to show you how to start your shirt. All right, so the iron has preheated. So what I always do is I always pre-warm my fabric. Plus it gets out any wrinkles, things like that. For this, you can obviously run your iron and rub it just like you would if you were regularly ironing. But I always like to pre-warm my fabrics. It does help. So, just gonna make sure it's nice and flat. Now there are specific instructions depending on what type of HTV you are using. Um, this one is not gonna be a centered project, but to make it straight, what I always use is the two finger rule from the collar. Um, and sometimes I'll actually use my ruler as just a little bit of a guide to where I want the top of my word to go. It doesn't have to be exactly two, it can be however you want it. But I always just sort of use it as a guide. And I try to eyeball it as best I can to where I think straight is. Um, I think this is pretty, pretty even. So I'm gonna do the I Want Adventure part first. And for this part, just make sure it's nice and pressed down. Move this out of the way. It wants you to cover it with parchment paper. And I'll get you guys the directions really quick because this is a specific kind of the Sister Easy Weed. This is actually what they call electric, I think. Yes, yeah, Sister Easy Weed Electric HTV. So for this one, 
we'll see how well you can see these. But there's the directions. So cut design in reverse and with weed excess material on a hard flat surface, place the garment and transfer to desire, cover with parchment paper or craft paper. Set to the cotton setting with no steam. Press iron firmly for 10 seconds on the entire design. Peel away clear poly carrier and then recover with the parchment or craft paper and reheat for 5 to 10 seconds. Allow 24 hours before washing. So I have my parchment paper and I just reused a piece that I've already used. It's not a big deal if you reuse any. Now this is a larger design so I'm probably going to have to press in a couple different spots um, for that amount of time in order for it to adhere correctly but it says about 10 seconds I believe correct yes 10 seconds so I'm just going to try to do like different sections for about 10 seconds I'm going to put a lot of pressure with my hands I'm just going to push a lot of my body weight onto the design and it's okay if you go a little bit longer than 10 seconds don't you know don't fret if it's just a little bit more it's not going to be the end of the world so I'm going to go ahead and move it down press again I do notice a lot of the um, YouTube videos show either a heat press or the easy press I like to use my iron um, a, I haven't invested in any of the larger equipment, and B, I already had it. And I just feel like a lot of people craft and try not to, like, spend a ton of money. So, for me, anything that I can do that doesn't cost a lot of money, those are my kind of crafts. Um, this t-shirt was $2 at Michael's today on sale. Um, the iron on the red... I got on sale at Michael's today as well. I believe it was about $11. And then I had the uh, gold, but I also bought that on sale a few weeks ago from Joanne. So I don't try to spend a ton of money to do my crafting. So I've done about 10 seconds. Now it does say peel it off. We'll see how well it's stuck. And see there's parts that aren't sticking up here and I'm guessing it's probably because it was on an edge and I really probably didn't press it very well so I'll just go back and press again this doesn't there's no scientific way to describe how to do these to you there's no perfect answer as to what's gonna work and you know how to make everything exactly perfect there's just it's just not how it works it's a lot of trial and error so don't worry if your first thing doesn't come out great or you screw up further down the road it's it's to be expected. So we'll go ahead and try again. Man, that N is just being there. That I is just being a butt face. So when it does that, I sometimes cheat. And I just put the iron directly on the carrier sheet. Don't worry. You're not going to kill anything. It will not ruin your project. Man, I don't know why that I. Parts of it are sticking. <laughs> just this bottom corner doesn't want to stick. So I'm going to add a little bit more pressure and a little bit more heat here. And we'll see if we can get it to stick. Um, a lot of times, I don't always go by what the directions say if they're not working. Um, like in this case, where my letters don't seem to want to stick in certain parts, I'm probably going to have to go over it again with the carrier sheet on top of it without the parchment paper over it. Um, like the W I can see here is already starting to lift. So what I do again, I just go right back to it. I just press it right directly on that carrier sheet. It, truthfully, it's it's not a big deal to have to do. I've done it on several shirts. It's not going to ruin it. Just don't put too much heat on it. And be careful because the parchment um, paper does tend to keep the plastic from getting super hot. So when you go and peel it, just be careful because you can burn your hand. Um, I have burned my hand more than on one occasion. Um, yeah, see like the W, the NT here doesn't want to stick. So we'll just add a little, apply a little more heat to it. It seems like everything towards the bottom's wanting to stick a little bit better than the top, but hard to say at this point, um, cause I see that end didn't stick very well. But because we're gonna go back over this with the parchment paper on top of it, I'm not super concerned if it's a little bit loose right now. Um, you just want to do this super duper slow, guys, because if one of them is lifting, you'll see it before you pull the whole letter up. 
So we're going to go very, very slow. You want to kind of hold your shirt down because, like, I can see certain letters that have lifted, which is, like I said, not a huge deal because we are going to go back over it. Um, this is a really pretty shiny red, and the shinier the um, heat transfer, I think a lot of times it seems like the more work you have to do to get them to stick. It's, um, I don't know if it has to do with the glue that they use or what, but I have noticed that um, I do have to do a little bit more pressing and a little bit more heat and definitely a lot more pressure when it comes to these ones to get them to stick. So again, just peel slowly, because um, like I said, that E didn't want to stay, but you can see now they stayed just fine. Um, you will see around some of your designs, and I don't know if you guys will be able to see it really in the video, but there's a little bit of a dark square. Don't worry about that. It'll come out in the wash. It's usually just from the adhesive, um, but remember not to wash this um, for at least 24 hours. I tend to wait 48 just for just to be safe, but you could wear it, you know, right away. It's not, it's not a big deal. So now it says that we're going to go ahead and reheat it. For about five to ten seconds I'll probably go closer to ten just because I know that it wasn't sticking very well to begin with so we're just gonna kind of eyeball ten seconds you know um, again make sure you do put a lot of pressure 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 that's the key that's why these heat presses are kind of nice because they they have that pressure built into them so when you snap the lid down um, it just comes right back up um, with all that extra pressure so we're gonna just press and press and press. Um, I am curious though, for those who do have an easy press, please let me know below. Um, do you think that it was worth the cost? Do you think um, you're better off getting a large heat press if you have one? What are your likes and dislikes? Um, I just have a, you know, I, I do some research. I'd really like to know how my followers feel about their heat presses and things like that. Um, and what kind do you recommend? Because I keep thinking that maybe it is something that I should start to consider um, investing in. I don't do t-shirts um, to sell or anything like that. I make them for friends and family and mostly just for myself for fun. So now that you've done this part, what you want to do, I always inspect. And what I'll do is I'll either grab like my cell phone or a light of so source of some sort and I just kind of hold it over my project because what you're going to want to see is the texture from your fabric in your um, wording or on your HTV so you'll see like a little bit of a pattern so we got that one down and that one looks like it is perfect and I'm really excited because it looks really really cute in that red against the gray so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put down the bell. And this is in a glitter, so this one takes a lot more heat and a lot more time. And let me just lift you up so I can get you out from under the... So with this one, we're going to move this down because we need our cookie sheet to be a little bit lower because I need to be able to press right here. Um, I can already feel the heat from the cookie sheet, so I don't need to preheat my um, surface. I'm just going to line up my bell where I want it. And this one I absolutely want to cover with the parchment, and I want to try to make sure that I don't heat right here. I want to just try to heat where the bell is and not so much on the other design because you don't want to overheat that first section. So we're going to put a lot of pressure. This one usually takes closer to, probably, I'd say, 30 seconds, but because I'm doing this on a T-shirt, I try to... Um, I will let it cool for a minute between my pressings um, just because I don't want to burn the shirt. Um, this is a lot of fun, guys. Once you get, you know, kind of used to it and once you have learned how much pressure and things like that it takes to do these, you guys will never want to do anything but t-shirts again. So I've pressed it a little bit with the parchment paper on it. The glitter, like I said, does take a little bit more pressure and a little bit more heat. So I will take my parchment paper off for a few and I'm going to press it just directly on with that carrier sheet still on top. You never want to press directly to a heat transfer vinyl without some sort of coverage, whether it be your clear carrier sheet or whether you use a piece of parchment or you can use a Teflon sheet. 
So I'm gonna peel this back and I'm gonna, whoop, no, 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 maybe I'm not. <laughs> the L did not wanna stick. So when you see a letter that doesn't stick, again, you can just do directly to that letter. Again, don't rub, only press and just, I'll use like the tip of my iron just so that it's, you know, I'm putting that immediate pressure right on the part that didn't want to stick. The glitter you can peel hot. Make sure you do read any of your um, HTVs and how they are to be peeled. There are some that are cool peel only, and then there are some that are hot peel only, and others you can do either way. Um, for this, I'm going to just do another set over the design directly with the parchment paper in between the design and the iron. I just want to make sure that it's good and stuck. Remember when you do wash these, you wash them inside out. Cold water only and no drying. Go ahead and hang these on the line to dry because if you don't, you will lose your heat transfer. So we now have our shirt and let me move my iron so that you guys can see this and I'll turn it so you guys can see the whole design. This really is a very simple, fun way to personalize your shirts, personalize hats. You can use HTV on lots of things. You can see how pretty and shiny this, this stuff is. It's really sparkly. I love it. Um, I hope you guys had a really, really fun time learning how to make this shirt. Again, you can get the SVG for this specific design down below at my Etsy store. Make sure you do subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time. If you have any questions, leave them below. Again, please let me know what you think about your heat presses or your um, easy press. I love to know that stuff. Uh, make sure you click the bell because the bell will let you know when I put up a new video. I hope you guys have a great day.